I'm so glad that each one of you is in the house of the Lord today. And amongst my many thanksgiving this season, imagine you are one of them. You, I just said you. You are one of them. Who would have said? Who would have said that 40 years ago? This is service. I can't see one who was there. In the first one, at least I have, there was one. Akawapi. Oh, Corinth. Come on, Corinth, stand up. By the way, the fellowship, the home cell that started this year, KZ, we used to meet in his house. Hapo kwa, kwa, kwa. Come on, celebrate the staying power. Amen, you can have your seats. I said, none of you was there. But God knew our paths would cross. And I'm so blessed I get to call you family. And today it's such a blessing and such an opportunity. And I value it that can I stand here and share God's word. Buona asifiwe. I'm so happy that you are here. And in the last few weeks, we have been start doing a study on the spiritual disciplines. And today again, I am privileged to be the one to do the last one for this season. And very quickly, I want us to talk about stewardship. Stewardship. And we want to remind ourselves that it all belongs to God. Who you are, what you have, where you stay, you all belong to God. And maybe you ask, you would ask, so what is stewardship? Stewardship is when somebody trusts you so much that he gives you his property so that you can take care of it. Terms and conditions apply. You take care within the delegated authority. Said in another way, we can say stewardship is managing God's resources in his way for his glory. Managing God's resources in his way for his glory. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to 2. And we are going to read together. It is very hot. So I will, I'm going to compete with the sleep. And I'll make sure I win. Because we'll keep reading. Okay? Let's go together. We have just said that stewardship is about managing God's resources, the ones he has given you, and very soon we are going to discover all of us have them. You have some resources that God has entrusted you. Now those resources he has given you, he wants you to manage them so well, use them for his glory, become trusted, and become faithful. Grow it, and make sure it becomes better. Within the delegated authority. In the book of Genesis, we read the story of creation. God created man. God created the world and everything. But at some point, he would delegate some responsibilities to the man. For example, in Genesis 2 and verse 18 or 19, the Bible says that God would create the animals and then he would bring them to man and ask the man to name them. His work was to, not to create but to name. Then, when he was through with the creation, he said, this is the garden. Tear it. Replenish. Manage. Multiply, and then take dominion. Those were the instructions. Remember, we have said you're supposed to be faithful. With the time, they decided, Adam and his wife decided they can change the delegation. The delegated terms and conditions. And they decided they would want to be more like God. The Bible says that the enemy lied to them and said that if you eat of this, uh, this tree, you become as God. So they started in their minds to imagine they are the owners, not God. 
never ever forget you are only entrusted, you are not the owner. Your work is to manage that which God has given you. Because once you start imagining you are the owner, the consequences would, could be like what happened to Adam and Eve. When they overstepped their mandate, and the owner one day, you know the owner is entitled to come and check the books anytime. So one day God came around, and he didn't find man. And the Bible says he used to visit them at the cool of the day, and they would have fellowship. This time around, God comes, and he can't see them. And he called Adam, where are you? And then Adam says, I am here, I am hiding. Why are you hiding? I'm naked. Who told you you are naked? He had overstepped. God was so disappointed until they were sacked from the garden. They were told to leave the garden. We all know, and we see it in, in the rim right, in the nation, in the TVs, in the news. Men and women who have been given responsibilities and they mismanage the resources and the responsibilities and they are sacked and others are put in position. That's what happens when you forget that you are a steward and not the owner. It, God, the owner can decide to sack you and raise another one and replace you. Tell your neighbor, I refuse to be replaced. Not when I, am, I have turned 40. Refuse to be replaced. So the fall of man has everything to do with Adam and Eve failing the test of trust, being trusted and being good stewards. And we don't want to follow suit. Bwana asifiwe. And the people listening to me this morning. I pray you, are a, you have not forgotten that you are not the owner. Because immediately you forget that you are, you are not the owner. You are just a steward. You could be on your way home. Because when the owner comes and finds that you have mismanaged, he will excuse you and raise up another one. And I also know there could be some who are listening to me. You are on your way to ascending. Because you have been given some resources. And you are doing so well. And the master would want to elevate you. I pray that shall be you. That you will not forget you are a steward. You will be faithful. Because to who is faithful. He's given more. You are given more. Actually, in the, in, the in, the, in the parable of the talent in Matthew 25, verse 21, after the owner came, after distributing the talents, when the owner came, in verse 21, this is how it ends. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You see the word faithful again? The one we talked about, stewards? You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. When you are faithful with that which God has given you, you qualify for more. So qualifying for more and for elevation, it is not for looking for people to, to vouch for you or to vote for you because this one, it is God. He sees, the, he hears the said and the unsaid. He sees even that which you do when you are in your crosset. So he is the one who elevates and he is the one who brings down. When you are faithful with that which you have received, God says, this one, I can entrust him with more. This one, I can entrust her with more. So very quickly, I want to talk, ab I want to talk about four pillars of stewardship. Number one, God created everything. He made it all. He is the owner. God created ownership. Everything, including you. Are you a thing? Or you're, some, or you're somebody? Everything, he made it all. Number two, God owns it all. And because he made it, he owns it. That shirt you are wearing, that dress you are wearing, you bought it. Therefore, it is yours. True or true? So God made everything, including you. He owns you and he owns everything. 
Deuteronomy 10, 14. If you can project it for us. This is what the Bible says. Shall we read together? Behold, the heavens and the highest of heavens belong to your God. The earth and all that is in it. The heavens of the heavens, the highest, they belong to God. Psalms 89 and verse 11. Let's read together. The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. Remember, we are talking about the two pillars, that God owns it all. God's made it all. Psalms 24, verse 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Ask your neighbor, where do you live? Do they live on earth? I tell them, ah, now I know. You belong to God. Because everyone who lives on earth belongs to God. Psalms 50, verse 10 and 11. We are still building on those two pillars that God made it all and he owns it all. Let's read together. For every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine. Tell your neighbor you own nothing, including the insects. <laughs> they belong to somebody else. You and the insect belong to the same father. Hallelujah. He made it all. He owns it all. And finally, Haggai chapter 2 and verse 8. Haggai 2, 8. Let's read together. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. Tell your neighbor, and the one at the, in the bank account, and the one you have put in a fixed account, they all belong to my father. Praise the Lord. We are stewards. Whatever it is that we do, we are not the owner. We have just read a few references that everything and all that we have belongs to God. Peter number three, he delegated everything. So we operate with that which he has delegated to you. Actually, you came with nothing and you will live with nothing. I just said that. Job knew this very well. The Bible says in Job chapter 1 that he was one of the righteous men in the Far East. He was a righteous man. He was, he was a wealthy man. Then one day all the wealth and all the children are gone. And then he arises. He had known the secret that I was only a steward. I never owned not a son, not a daughter, not the animals. I was only a steward. And then he said in verse 21, let's read together. And said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Job knew the secret that he was not the owner. And because of that knowledge, the Bible says in the book of Job chapter 42, that his latter days were better. When you embrace that it is God gives, he can give you, ag he can give you again. The next verse, verse 22, it says, even after all that loss, Job did not curse God. Instead, he worshipped God. You know, some of us, when things don't go the way we prayed, now you throw tantrums. You will not go to that cell. You will not go to that meeting. You will not go to church. You will not take anybody's phone at your own risk. Because you are the one who needs people, they can do without you. Ask me how I know they can do without you. Before you were born, life continued. And after you have left, life will continue. So I'm the one who needs you. Tell your neighbor, you need me, I need you. Pillar number four. 
God will hold you accountable. You will answer for your actions. Adam had to answer and face the consequences. And we all know the consequences. He was drawn out of the garden. Luke chapter 16 verse 1 and 2 and we shall read together. You have to remember you will give an account. Let's go. Please open your mouth if you know how to read. It will help you to remain awake and it will encourage me. When I see you do like this, I'm not encouraged. But imagine I'll continue speaking. Let's read together. There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management. Because you cannot be a manager any longer. I pray none of us will receive such a message. God telling you, you can no longer be. Let me tell you, God's case no appeal. You know some of these things, when things go wrong, you go to look, who knows you, who knows that one, who, so that, and as a kukutetea. When God says you, you can no longer be a manager because you have mismanaged his resources, there is nothing you can do. But let me tell you, there is good news. You comply with the delegated authority, he'll give you more. God sucks people from power, positions, and responsibilities. If they don't utilize the resources for his glory and advancement of his purposes. Everything that you have, God expects you to manage them so well for his glory and advancement of his kingdom. The day you start imagining that what you have belongs to you, you lose it. Let's see, and I want you to mark the many times this man referred to himself, I, my, that, those are usually very dangerous words, me, myself, and I, me, I don't like this. Me, I don't like it when they keep on talking. Who? Luke 12, 16 to 21, we shall read. And we are going to read with an understanding. Internalizing it, understanding it, and soaking it in. Let's go. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundance of harvest. Hold it there. Usually these things come when you are blessed. All of a sudden, now you can drive, now you're in a bigger house, now you can wear a suit, now you can speak English, now you can say I graduated, now you can say that which happened to you, your business is growing, this is what happens when you are blessed. Continue, project it for us. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Can you see the eyes? Let's continue. He thought... He, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. Next. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain, laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This man had forgotten that even the very life was not his. And that day God called him a fool. Let me tell you better, anybody else call me a fool but not God. If God calls you a fool, you must be a confirmed fool. This man thought he belonged to himself. He didn't know even the very life he had was not his. He wanted to build barns and then tell himself, eat, relax, no worries. And that night, the very same life, his life was demanded of him. This man forgot he was not the owner, but just a steward. And I have a secret this morning. He was asked, who will enjoy these things you wanted to keep? I want to give you a secret. Since you, we said naked we came and naked we will go, meaning you cannot carry what you have 
gathered what you have been blessed here on earth with yourself to the next world, there is a way out. Sharing is a way of carrying things with us to the next world. Sharing. That when you are blessed, you are blessed to be a blessing. And when you are blessed, God will ensure there is a Lazarus in your neighborhood. Did you hear what I said? That you ensure there is a Lazarus. How you deal with that Lazarus, that poor man, that watchman, that street child who stays at your gate looking at you, and when you got there, you, you pull down the, the window and say hi. Or you instead of, of pulling it down, you close because you are fearing him or her. How you treat that Lazarus will determine the rest of your life. May the Lord give you the discerning spirit that you will know where God expects you to partner with him and become an extension of his blessings to somebody. When you bless other people, you are actually recruiting prayer warriors for you. There's a very interesting story in the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 2 to 6, and we shall read together. Let's read Luke chapter 7, 2 to 6. Let's go. There, a centurion servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, this man deserves to have you do this. Because he loves our nation and has built a synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. You'll continue with the story. This man wanted a favor from Jesus. So he sent the, the elders I am sure we, don't, we didn't hear. His message was very, was very specific. Ask him to heal my servant. But the elders told Jesus, this man is so good. He helps us. He even built a signal for us. You better heal his servant. Let me tell you, when you help and become a blessing to your neighborhood, to your workmates, to your protimates, when you become a blessing, they become your intercessors. We are just stewards. This man seems he knew that he was just a steward. And now maybe you are talking about, and this season on the road to 40, there will be many opportunities to thank God, to praise God, to witness about God, to worship God. On Friday, we had a worship experience. To come and celebrate in the presence of the Lord, we had a word fest. And there will be many things. And among the many things, we will have several opportunities to reach out to the community around us. I've just said that giving out to the rest fortunate is one of the ways of having an account at the bank of heaven. The Bible says in the book of Revelations that good works will follow us. I want you to look back. I meant muagalia nyuma mulifrect. Uone kama kuna good deeds about zina kufuata. Ili kama haziko utaanza kuanzia leo. And we have, it is what you do with that which God has given you. When you encourage that, so when you encourage them and they know they are loved and they are valued. You tell them about the good news and what Jesus has done for you. You share with them one packet of unga because you have got four. Some of them are expiring in your shelves. That shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. When somebody is sleeping hungry and she's your neighbor, they are in your neighborhood, if anything you are planning how to relocate because they are a nuisance, but before you relocate, you can make a name for Jesus. That here lived a woman. 
Here lived a man, and he was such a blessing. That shall be your story this season. And there will be opportunities to give out. Ukiambiwa toa miyabiri, kama ukonato toa. Kwa sababu hata si zako. Si turisoma, si and gold belong to who? Si turisoma. Si and gold belong to who? And you belong to who? And where do you live? So, it is stewardship to the resources that God has given us. And very quickly, I want to talk about five resources which all of us have. And God has an expectation that you remember you are not the owner, you are only a custodian, you are a steward. Resource number one is yourself, and I'm calling it temple. Wewe, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We talk about the good news, but the good news have to be carried by a, a human being like you. So you have to take care of the carrier of the good news. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. This morning, I know I'm addressing temples. You are in charge of yourself. You are in charge of your body. Take care of your body. Don't allow it to do the things it's not, that makes God sad. Feed it well. Give it good medical care. Do exercise. Treat yourself well. If they are mistreating you, refuse to join the bad wagon of mistreating. You know some of us, they are mistreating you. Ata we unaza kujiz mistreat. Treat yourself well. Talk well about yourself. You know some of us, ubaya wagu, please, nisawa tumeona. But you can say usuri wagu. Hey, I am healthy by the grace of God. I brought myself with my two feet to church this morning. Do you know there are many people who would have loved to come to church? They can't be able to come. Take care of that temple. Don't misuse it. Don't give it alcohol. Don't give it cigarettes. Don't give it drugs. Those ones are destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he who destroys or mismanages the temple, God will destroy. That shall not be you. We will take care of the temple. Resource number two, time. Time. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Time is a resource that God has entrusted you. You are just a custodian. And this is what the Bible says. Let's read together. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. All right. And I want you to... Make sure you hear what you are saying. We are reading. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand the Lord. There is a version that talks about specifically making the most of the time. Time is a resource. From today, know even that time. This time kill us. You know, hey, we were killing time. Invest time. Time is money. Time is opportunity. Invest when you are able. My mother used to tell me that the, 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 the old, a graceful old age depends on the youthful, nicely used time. Now it sounds so nice in Kikuyu, but now all of you are not Kikuyus. What you did when you are strong determines how graceful you enjoy your future. Invest when you can. Spend it. Invest your time. This story that 24-7 you are on social media. There is time for everything. That's what Solomon said. There is time for social media, but there is time also to work. Take advantage. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 says, Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, 
and the years approach when you will say, I find no pressure in them. I am here to submit to you. There are some things which I could do when I was 20 years. Today, even if I try, imagine I can't. No apologies. It is okay. Like now, the way the worship team were jamming. But I'll do it according to my ability. Enjoy now. Go for fellowships now when you can. A time will come when you say, I would really have to go, but I cannot. On Thursday, was it Wednesday? I attended a burial in Kinagop of a brother of a friend. The mother is very old. It was so sad because we were burying his son, but that lady, we were seated like here, and the grave was like where the, that black vehicle is. But the mother could not be able to walk, even with assistance, because the ground was rough. And I know when she was having those children, she could walk around. Invest when you can. Invest the time and do those things because a time will come when you will say, I no longer enjoy what I'm seeing. Resource number three, talent. Everyone has been given some talents, some skills, abilities, calling, anointing. Seek and purpose to know them, know your talent, develop it, and use it for God's glory and advancement. Because God expects that. We read Arya. He told that wise man who had invested, well done, good and faithful servant. How I pray that all of us can desire that one day God can tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. Treasure number four is treasure. Uh, resource number four is treasure. Treasure. This is about finances and material possessions. We have just read that every silver and gold belongs to God. Therefore, because God has entrusted you with those resources, material and possessions, God has a few expectations. Number one, he expects you to give generously. He expects you to give with a cheerful heart. God loves a cheerful giver. There's a very interesting story in the book of 1 Chronicles 29, 14 to 18, and we shall read there. 1 Chronicles 29, 14 to 18, let's read. This is after there was, there was a fundraiser, in quotes, for lack of a better word. And uh, now David, I think he, maybe he was the bishop, they were collecting some money to build the temple. And this is what he said. Shall we read together? But who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple, for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. And the priest with integrity, all these things I have given willingly and with honest intent, and now, I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. We are talking about giving back to God willingly. I've just talked about there will be opportunities to give. How I pray that it can be said of us. Hold that verse there. It can be said of us that we have given generously. We have given willingly. And we are so excited in the Old Testament, there is a time that Moses had to stand and tell the children of Israel, now don't bring any more. Let me tell you something. We may not have gotten there, but I'm here as a testimony. This is not where we were 40 years ago. This is not where we were 40 years ago. We have come a long way. We have a reason to praise God. And I was remembering, when we were in that Matope church, and we were raising money to buy the plot where the church is, the cathedral is. The ladies, who were very few, 
we would cook mandazi on Saturday night. In one of the sisters' house outside, request to jiko, cook mandazi up to around 3 a.m. Then the following day, we go with the same to church. We sell to ourselves and to the others who will come. And I'm reminded of this time we, we, we cooked. We went to church, we were selling to ourselves, and the madazis never got finished. God bless her so she still has a voice. Our then chair lady, her name was Esther Gatubu. She carried those mandazis with her bas in a basket, with a keondo. Door to door in Zimmerman. This time round, not evangelism. And he would knock the gates and say, Mnataka kununua mandazi. <laughs> Today, by the grace of God, we still cook mandazi. Not to come and sell, but to bless the servants who are serving that day. That is what God can do. We may not be where we would want to be, but definitely, I'm here to confirm, we are not where we are. The Lord has been good. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, church, celebrate Jesus. The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has been good to you. And you know what, as I said this, Tell your neighbor, lest you forget you are 40. Yeah, you are part of the testimonies. You are 40. I'm talking about those people who are 40, and you are about the and you are that one. You are a 40. So, how many resources have I told you? How many? Higher. Let's go. I want to tell you the last one. And all this time, how many of us don't have time? Each one of us, we have 24 hours. True or true? Talent, we all have. You are differently abled so that we can complement each other. We all have. And of course, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Finally, the last resource is called relationships. Relationships, all of us are related. Hey, you have a brother, you have a sister, you have a friend, you have a neighbor, you have a colleague, you have a husband, you have a wife. All these relationships, it matters. We read in one of the verses that God lives in the, in the heavens, but the earth he has given the children of men. So whatever blessings you will receive here, even where you work and in that business, you depend on people. Some relationships. Treat those people you interact with well. You never know how God will package your answer. It may be, it may be has packaged it through your neighbor. And when you get there, you don't even say hi. Where I come from, we say, what to do of it? You can interpret it in your mother tongue. What to do? Whatever it is that you are praying today, Whatever it is, name it. Somehow, even if you want to tell me this, we are in an era of technology. Who, who, who created, who invented that technology? Siniwatu, you need people. Relationships. Mind your relationships with your parents. You cannot do without them. For your information, minus them, you are not. Did you hear what I said? Maybe they have mistreated you, but minus them, you are not. Your mother carried you for nine months. Never mind, she doesn't know how to speak English. She shrubs. She's your mother. Mind your relationships. So, remember, you are not your own. You came with nothing. Everything you have, you have received. And you know some of us want to ringa because you are so blessed. Tell your neighbor, kira kitu konayo ulipewa. First Corinthians 4, 7, as I wind up. First Corinthians 4, 7. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Is that in your Bible? There's another version that says, For who makes you so superior? What do you have that you didn't receive? If in fact you did receive it, why do you boast as if you hadn't received it? Everything that you have, you have been given to manage and to make it a blessing to others.
Deuteronomy 8, 17 to 18 says in the message version. Deuteronomy 8, 17 to 18. Let's read together. If you start thinking to yourselves, I did all this and all by myself. I am rich. It is mine. Well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant that he promised to your ancestors as it is today. So, ask your neighbor, what is it that you have that you didn't, well, you are not given? So, remember to give yourself so that you can be able to give to others. Remember that God gives you according to your ability. And remember, one day you will give an account. The owner can come, can show up anytime. And he has a right to go through your books. I pray that you will enjoy as he inspects. Or is it doing a job an evaluation, job performance evaluation? And looks at how well you have grown your tal your ta the talent he gave to you. Or he wants to inspect your attitude towards your giving because he expects you to give joyously. He wants to, you to see how devoted you are in doing what you are supposed to do. So if the owner called you today to give an account, what would the record say about your giving? What would the record say about your faithfulness in the assignments that he has given you? What would he talk about your attitude towards others, towards giving? Do you give cheerfully and generously? Or have you mistaken and imagined that you are the owner? You are not the owner. He is the owner. You have just been entrusted. And it is called for all stewards to be faithful to be trusted, to be competent. You cannot afford to be an undertaker in the house of God. We want to grow that which God has given us. Do your best, because he never said when he'll come, but for sure, he will show up. I pray that you'll be found ready. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this afternoon. We thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding that everything that we are, everything that we have belongs to you. You have only trusted us enough and trusted us with the same. I pray that we will look at it from that angle. That you are the owner. You can come for it anytime. And if you mismanage it, you can take it and give it to somebody else. I pray that you give us the grace, the right attitude, so that we can grow, multiply. I pray that you make us desire to hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. We honor you today. We bless you. And we are so glad that you can be in your house at a time like this. And maybe you are in church this morning. We have been talking about that we are just stewards. And we are owned by somebody. And maybe you are here. You have never given your life to Jesus. And this morning you have been reminded that even yourself, you belong to him. And you would want to give your life to Jesus. Could you be there? And you want to give your life to Jesus. If you lift up your hand, I'll see it from here, and we shall pray for you. Are you there? You would want to give your life to Jesus. Just lift up your hand. I will see it, and we are going to pray together. Are you there? Ask yourself if you are ready. And he shows up, and he wants you to give an account. Are you ready to give the account? Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus? <laughs> Father, we thank you for your word. We know that, Lord, you follow your word to perform it. And this morning we have read your word. I pray from the sharing this morning, we, each one of us will desire to become and remain a good and a trusted steward to the glory of your name. Receive the glory, receive the honor in Jesus' name. Celebrate Jesus!